Welcome to Tech Brothers. This is part two of the video how to set up always on availability group when SQL Server instances are installed in cluster mode. In this video, we're going to run some tests against our uh, availability group. In previous video, we have set up successfully availability group on SQL Server instances that are running in cluster mode. However, we have made some changes in our failover cluster. We have made uh, some changes in configuration of our SQL Server instances that are running in cluster mode. And we wanted to see that uh, how um, it behaves when it comes to uh, the normal failover of SQL Server instances and how our availability group behave uh, when SQL Server instance fails over or whether they fail over or not. And what if um, our node goes down and uh, one of our node goes down, uh, how SQL Server instances are going to fail over and uh, again, how our availability group is going to behave. So up here is my node one and uh, here is a SQL Server, uh, I mean, uh, Windows uh, cluster right here. And we have uh, two SQL Server uh, instances installed up here. So right now we have SQL Server instances right here and uh, this is our availability group that we have created. Successfully, it's running. Let me show you uh, real quick right here. As you can see that uh, uh, sales order underscore new is in synchro synchronized and right here is synchronizing. This is our uh, secondary and this is our primary. Let me open up the availability groups right here. These are the primary replica, secondary replica. I have not created the listener so right here everything is working fine but uh, uh, we have made some changes in order for this to work for us so let's go ahead and see all those changes whether they are feasible for especially for production servers so let me go ahead and first try to fail over SQL production, uh, SQL Server uh, instance to our node 2. Under normal, normal circumstances, this SQL Server instance should fail over to node 2 and both instances should run on same node. But this violates our availability group um, prerequisition. So let's go ahead and just give it a try. Move to select node. This is node 2. We still get an option to move it to another node. Let's click OK. And there you go. It says this action cannot be completed. The reason is that if you right click and go to properties, uh, I'm sorry, if, if you click on that and go to the SQL Server resources right here, right here is SQL Server resources and click go on properties, advanced policies and possible owners. Right now, uh, in order for our uh, availability group to work in previous video, we had to take node 2 out of possible owners. Since we took that out, it is not going to let us move to TBS node 2 because this node is not possible and uh, possible owner anymore. So that is our first test. Uh, keep in mind that is very important test. That means that you have lost automatic failover if node 1 something happened to node 1 your SQL Server instance this one in my case or any SQL Server instance instance that's running on uh, node 1 in your case maybe there are multiple SQL Server instances on on that node that's running so they will all go down they will not fail over to node 2 and not have uh, a SQL Server um, instance failover like normally we have under uh, failover clustering so that is the first thing we lose if we set up this scenario, uh, availability group scenario. And same with the uh, UAT right here, SQL Server uh, instance right now is running on node two. If we try to move to node one, it's gonna give us the same error as you can see because the possible owner, uh, we have taken uh, node one as a possible owner. Now, uh, our next test is that if we uh, turn off node one, obviously the SQL prod is not gonna uh, come up, our um, um, cluster would be up and our avail uh, availability group will go down for sure. So let me go ahead and since this is a VM, I'm going to go ahead and fire up Hyper-V. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off node 1. And this is, I'm just uh, trying to create a scenario where disaster happened and node one went down or something happened to node one and it's not coming up. 
So what is our availability that we just created is going to do for us. So let's go ahead. This is my node 2. I'm going to go ahead and open the failover clustering here. And see that um, how our cluster is behaving. As you can see right here that the SQL prod is stopped and our availability group is stopped as well. So this is going now, uh, this is coming online uh, MSDTC on node 2, but um, as you can see that uh, this did not come on our node 2. The reason behind that was we have taken that ability away from, from this uh, SQL Server instance because we told that uh, uh, in resources that the possible owner for this uh, uh, SQL Server instance uh, is no more uh, node 2. So um, again, there, there, there is going to be a lot of issues with your availability group. However, if I turn on the SQL Server instance, uh, I mean node 1, and as soon as it connects, it will get to the stage. However, you will have a lot of issues uh, resetting your availability group. So, uh, what it means is what I when I this is these are new tests for me as well. So what I did was that um, uh, when it came back, everything started working all right. So um, it kicked off um, one of the replica out, and I had to turn that replica off and then add it back in. So it is a lot of maintenance. Uh, what I'm saying is this is not something that you wanted to put in your production. So just keep in mind that um, uh, this is this, the, the video that I wanted to put out there just for the test purposes so that I can show you that uh, when it goes down, uh, you know, when we follow the prerequisites of availability group, uh, we basically lose the ability of a failover um, a failover cluster uh, when our SQL Server instance is installed in failover cluster. And if we comply with failover cluster, then we cannot create availability group. So these these things really don't work uh, well with each other. So uh, best practice is that uh, you install your SQL Server in um, standalone mode on the different nodes, add those nodes in a cluster and set up your availability group. And that's if you are basically going with the route of uh, availability group. So um, I hope this uh, little demo helps and uh, keep in mind that uh, you will run into uh, really a lot of maintenance if you wanted to follow this route. However, this is all available for you to learn. I hope it helps.